Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Edward's for our celebration of the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin, we please ask you to silence your cell phones. Thank you. Our presider today is Father Rick. Please join us in singing our gathering song, number 732, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, 732. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather on this beautiful Sunday morning, this winter morning, we have our eighth grade faith formation class assisting with us as liturgical ministers. So as we come together as one family in faith, we first take a moment to pause and reflect on those times that we've sinned, so that we might prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their hearts.
instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Way of your statutes, then give me the discernment that I may observe your law. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak of wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, what eye has not seen, an ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything and even the depths of the God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory, glory to you o lord jesus said to his disciples do not think that i have come to abolish the law or the prophets i have come not to abolish but to fulfill amen i say to you until heaven and earth pass away not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to brother Raga will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. 
But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife unless the marriage is unlawful causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everybody. Another beautiful morning this weekend. We've been blessed pretty much most of this winter, so thanks be to God for that. You know, if we look back at our lives and um, some of the different uh, situations or circumstances that we have found ourselves in, um, sometimes it's not a bad idea to Uh, reflect on the things we've experienced. And perhaps we've come across a time when we had a job or a responsibility given to us when we were asked occasionally to do more. And then occasionally being asked to do more became frequently being asked to do more. And then frequently being asked to do more became always being asked to do more. Whether it's a job or a relationship or a volunteer activity or a favor for a friend, we like to be clear about what are the expectations of us. We don't particularly like surprises. So what about when it comes to the principles by which we live our lives as faithful Christians? Look at the disciples in today's gospel, rather lengthy gospel, listening to Jesus elaborate on what he said he would do. Not abolish the law and the prophets, but fulfill them. They're listening to him elaborate on fulfilling the law of Moses. And he brings up a a number of examples. He speaks about not killing, and then starts talking about anger and harsh language being liable to judgment. He brings up not committing adultery, and then he starts talking about lustful looking, lustful gazes, being equally as serious a sin. He speaks of oaths, but says, why bother with oath swearing? Why bother? It's not needed. Be honest. Just be honest. If we're always truthful as we should be, then oath swearing is something that's completely unnecessary. Jesus states in the gospel various situations or stipulations of the law of Moses by which the people lived. But he did something else. Did you hear how he goes through all of these things? You have heard it said, so he's quoting the law, but then he goes above that and beyond it. He says, but I say to you. He's adding more. He's adding something more. He expects better from his disciples than what the law stipulates. That's the beautiful but challenging side of God's laws. They're beautiful because they give us a kind of a blueprint for how to live our lives. And if we do our best to obey the commandments of the law and the other stipulations, we can be assured that we're on pretty solid ground. But Jesus is saying something else. He's saying something that requires more of us. As I've stated over and over again at different times, 
and homilies, he raises the bar. Jesus doesn't come to keep things the same or to make it easier in some way. He raises the bar. This is the challenging side of having God's laws spelled out. From Jesus' words in today's gospel, it seems that while we might think of the commandments, the Ten Commandments in particular, are kind of narrow rules that address very specific issues, they're actually much more than that, much more than that. They're actually broad categories that are meant to cover large areas of our lives and are meant to inform all sorts of the moral decisions that we make. So in those Ten Commandments, there's more there than it seems. In other words, it might seem pretty easy for us not to have other gods. One of the commandments, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. Well, that's pretty easy. I don't go and worship some other god on a Sunday or any other day of the week. But this is the thing. It's pretty easy in that situation, but not when those gods include things in this life which have too much power over us or which distract us from giving our full time and attention or the necessary time and attention and worship that we should be giving to the God of the world. It might be easy for us not to steal, but when not stealing includes things such as damaging someone else's reputation, can anybody say gossip, and hopes, and perhaps even their self-worth, taking these things, in a sense, stealing these things from them. It might be pretty, for, uh, pretty easy for us not to kill, but not if that includes supporting the killing of the unborn or the aged or the severely debilitated or those on death row. And it might be easy for us not to covet, but not when that includes continually striving to get more than we have, more than perhaps even our share, more than we need or deserve. Being faithful is not simply making a few choices concerning big moral issues. Being faithful, living a moral life, living according to God's law, is about being a person who has been totally, totally transformed by the power of the resurrection and by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It is about people who are changed completely. So being a person of faith and morals, which we all hope, we all believe ourselves to be, involves our whole being. It involves every part of us and every aspect of our lives. It's a profound and radical, in the best sense of the word, way of thinking and seeing and seeing and acting. Not in the ways that humans have always done or normally done so throughout history, but in and through the lens of Jesus Christ and his saving acts. Acts which have the power to change everything, including you and me and every person with an open heart. So let's not try to think about being faithful as just avoiding breaking commandments. Instead, let's see it as embracing a whole new way of life. The life God created us to live and the life that God died to make possible for us. When we allow that to happen, when we allow that to happen, when we don't set up impediments or obstacle to God's movement in our life and the Holy Spirit's action in our life, there's a good chance that a lot of the, the, the decisions that we make every day will become much easier, will become much clearer, will become much less complicated, for they will flow from who we are and not simply from what the law or the duty or the obligation is. How much better, how much different would the world be if we did that? And how much more effective and successful would we be at attracting others to the faith and to a whole new way of life?
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we allow the law of God to penetrate our hearts and to transform our souls, we lift up our prayers and petitions. For the church, that she will always be an instrument of healing and reconciliation in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For world leaders, that they will work for true and lasting peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who cannot worship with us today because of illness or various infirmities, that they will experience the healing presence of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples and the families they are raising, that they may receive constant blessings from God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we may find in God's commandments and in our Lord's love the path that leads to salvation and eternal happiness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for com the comfort of those who mourn their passing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Bill and Rene Thompson, whom we remember in a special way at this liturgy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear the prayers we offer to you with humility and confident trust, and answer them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of preparation can be found on page five. I'm sorry, that's number 534, Prayer of St. Francis, number 534. Four.
compassion for them for this we have received the wine and oil for you for the wine and oil is going into us becoming our spiritual drink and the spirit of Yahweh triumphant through the soul of Yahweh for the sacrifice this day we present to you O God wash me away from my iniquity cleanse me from my sin thank you for the bath pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 330, Ang Katawan Mi Cristo, number 330. Thank you. 
in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. And our vocation prayer. God, our Father, you made each of us to use our gifts in the body of Christ. We ask that you inspire young people whom you call to priesthood and consecrated life to courageously follow your will. Send workers into your great harvest so that the gospel is preached, the poor are served with love, the suffering are comforted, and your people are strengthened by the sacraments. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Some announcements this morning. The youth group is having their Super Bowl collection this weekend to support our St. Vincent de Paul food pantry right next door. So if uh, you'd like to contribute, they'll be at uh, at least the main or exit and also perhaps at the side exits. Uh, look for information in the bulletin about uh, the Northwest Indiana Catholic subscription renewal and the envelope is in your packet of envelopes. Mary's prayer hour is Monday at 3 p.m. in the church. All are welcome. Also, Monday evening, uh, beginning at 7 p.m., we'll, be, uh, we'll start to view the Chosen DVD series. It will be in the school meeting room, also called the Knights Room, uh, back at the end of the hallway. Um, and we will continue most Monday evenings uh, viewing seasons one, two, and three. This is a great opportunity if you know somebody who doesn't really have uh, a religious affiliation or might be a Catholic who's not practicing. Uh, if you'd like to bring that person, uh, this may be just what they need uh, to open their eyes uh, uh, and heart to Jesus Christ. Liturgical ministers, if you haven't done so, please pick up your new schedules in the vestibule. Also, the deadline for bringing back palms from last year or previous years is the 18th of Next Sunday, 
next Sunday, Sunday the 18th or 19th, whatever it is, next Sunday. If you have any palms, you can drop them off in the basket in the vestibule. And that is it. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And our closing song is number 621, Rain Down, number 621. 